Hey, what's up, guys? It's time, finally, for the Street Fighter VI Top 5 Wishlist. I want to do this video for a really long time, and I know it's the end of 2019. It might still be a little too early, but with all the rumors and stuff, and now that Street Fighter VI is in our head, screw it. Let's do it now, okay? So these are my top five things I want in Street Fighter VI in no particular order. So let's get the ball rolling with number one. The game needs to be complete on launch. <laughs> So, Street Fighter V, as you guys know, had an extremely, extremely rocky start. It was so extreme that I'm surprised the game is still alive to this day. Esports definitely saved it. Um, this was partly due to, you know, Capcom having very, uh, a very poor financial situation back then. And Street Fighter V wasn't really supposed to exist without the help of Sony. So they had, you know, they had to roll it out fast, but at the same time, uh, they couldn't make it the complete package it was before. So now, hopefully, they can. Um, they tr also another. They did a lot of weird decisions as well because Street Fighter V was supposed to be this whole kind of like it had the the DLC model where the game evolves and we get constant content over time for the game, and which we did. A lot of it was fixes for things as well. But the key thing here is that Capcom charged us all a full AAA price for a, a kind of free-to-play model. So a lot of people were very disappointed by this, especially on the, the casual side, because we're lacking many things. Uh, we're lacking uh, arcade mode. We actually had to make an arcade edition. We were lacking story mode when the game came out. There was nothing for casuals to do except play online, basically. Uh, the lobbies were two-man lobbies on launch, in case you guys don't remember that. Um, the characters, there weren't very many characters. A lot of people have character crisis where they can't figure out who they want to play. And we're missing a lot of the essentials that were frankly in Street Fighter 4, like online training mode, which we're still missing to this very day. Something I think is completely essential uh, to the game. So, yeah, you can't have it both ways, Capcom. You can't have it, you know, we're going to have like a free-to-play model, but you still got to pay us a huge AAA price up front. So hopefully Capcom learned a lot from the mistakes from that. And, uh, yeah. And I, I know we've been talking... Uh, a lot about Street Fighter 6 lately and you know we want it to come right around the corner we want Street Fighter 5 you know we feel like it's run its course and it's time to move on but at the same time we don't want Capcom to rush Street Fighter 6 and end up in this situation so I'll be salty that Street Fighter 6 won't come out right away but at the same time I'll be happy if it's a complete package and it'll be worth the wait all right number two Street Fighter 6 must be on every platform and I'm kind of cheating when I say this because not only has to be on every platform I also feel like they should really make sure it has cross-platform play so I still consider this as one thing because I mean this is the future man we're moving on to next gen we need some next gen things a lot of games are starting to be cross-platform it's doable and of course we already have cross-platform uh, with P PS4 and PC I'm pretty sure Capcom worked in-house actually on both titles so they didn't port Street Fighter out to Street Fighter V out to make it work, and uh, I think this is another consequence of Capcom's financial trouble with it being a PS4 exclusive. And I'm really worried because Sony's very, very aggressive with their exclusive titles. That's how they they dominate the, the this generation. It was like so many good exclusives on PS4, and I'm sure Sony's going to be very aggressive with that with PlayStation 5. Uh, even with timed exclusives, would be just as bad. So I really hope that Capcom uh, holds the fort here, you know, doesn't break a deal. Maybe they can have, you know, maybe exclusive DLC or something, right? Not exclusive character, please. But at least make sure it's on every single platform. The bigger the community, the better, obviously, for fighting games, which are a niche. We need them to be strong and so that the game continues to live for a long time. Because these games are supposed to last us years, right? They're not supposed to last us a couple of months and then you move on. And uh, yeah, crossplay is definitely a no-brainer, which will help us all come together and uh, make everything much, much more easier to keep the game alive. All right, number three. <laughs> you guys saw this one coming. Good netcode. Obviously, the game must have good netcode. Street Fighter V is notorious for having one of the worst netcodes of all current generation fighting games. It has unique special things to it that other fighting games don't have. Like one-sided rollback. One-sided rollback. They have terrible matchmaking where you're playing against people on different continents as you. Not just different countries, continents. 
okay? When there's clearly other players in your area that are playing at peak hours, uh, it lacks a lot of important information. What's the ping of your opponent? Where are they before you play them? This information will be really helpful prior to playing your opponent and then walking yourself. Even when it says five bars, let's be real, right? Sometimes it's just the worst match ever. Sometimes you'll accidentally hit a one bar connection and it's the best match ever. You can't tell because of this one-sided uh, rollback. It's just ridiculous. Another thing, there's no prevention for Wi-Fi, which is in Mortal Kombat and in Injustice 2. They have resyncing issues, where the longer the match goes, the worse the connection gets, regardless if you're waiting uh, between rounds to rematch or whatever. It just doesn't make any sense. And of course, region locking, which <laughs> region locking, like I said, is another issue as well. There's a lot of players that are just, they can't find players to play. So. There's, there's a lot of issues with the netcode, not just with the performance. I know there are connections out there that are so bad that netcode can't save you, but come on, man. There are definitely, definitely options out there for Capcom to take. And I'm not super worried about this because there's other Capcom titles after Street Fighter V that have okay netcode. I didn't mind MVCI that much. Their anniversary, I didn't have too much bad experiences myself, but it's iffy. Everyone has a different experience, uh, but... Uh, <laughs> I think this should be absolute top priority, especially since we can already know that Street Fighter 6 will be a major esports title, and they're already planning to do many online tournaments, seriously, so netcode is absolutely essential. Okay, so we're going to get a little weird now. Those, those three, I'm sure everyone can agree with on me, I think that's a no-brainer. Now we're going to get a little, little weird stuff. So number four, um, mainstream seasonal content. So. I play a lot of different genres, I don't just play fighting games, especially FPS I play. And the idea of a battle pass system, or shorter seasons for the game, I think would definitely work for, for the fighting game genre. We already see with Mortal Kombat 11 how they have seasons in their ranked mode, and you play that season, you get stuff at the end of the season, and then you restart ranked, and then you start the grind all over again. I love that kind of stuff. I love going on the grind. You guys see me do it all the time on Twitch, where I'm literally just making new accounts so I can go on that grind again. Um, for example, you know, at the end of the season, the new season starts, I'm like, hey, maybe I'm going to try to get to the diamond rank with Sagat this season. Or maybe I'm going to try to do it with Chun-Li this season. You know, it gives you fresh vibes, especially when there's a new balance patch around the corner and you can see how far you go. Or maybe if you're like a silver player, you're like, man, I really think I'm going to make it to gold this season. And you have something to work for. And that's, that's really fun. And um, another thing with the battle pass system, I think would work very well and is more intuitive uh, than the current uh, fight money weekly challenges and the fight money system in general in Street Fighter V. So if they had a battle pass uh, and you would play, just simply play the game and you would earn tiers, the tiers would give you some DLC costumes for free, perhaps even maybe a character as long as it's the beginning of the battle pass, right? Uh, maybe some new colors and etc, right? Just simple challenges, simple things, titles, all that that keep people engaged and want to play and want to grind it out, right? And I, I think I think it's just a way better system these days than like logging in and just trying to get fight money. It's just such a grind. Or fighting dumb AI. Like who cares? Like the Golden Soldiers, everyone just busts out Rashid and you do a bunch of you know eagle spikes and whatever, right? It just doesn't feel good compared to uh, the system it is now. Capcom is always kind of a year behind on what the current trends are for gaming and I really hope that they finally catch up this time and really look at what other games are doing for uh, mainstream seasonal content. Now, I'm not saying for Capcom to release a balance patch every single 3-4 months, of course not. Maybe every second season, right? Maybe a balance patch, uh, like one every half a year and then one year. But even if they did a balance patch every one year, man, you can still have seasons, right? You can still add content to the game without specifically doing balance and of course affecting the CPT. But either way, I think they should take a look, especially with Mortal Kombat 11 doing it right now. Okay, now for number five, this will be the most controversial one for sure. I want to do an entire video about this actually, and I'm talking this a lot on my stream. So number five is, I want Street Fighter VI to use the RE engine. Reach for the moon. <laughs> That's right, guys. I want them to use Capcom's propriety engine because, I don't know, man, I think it would look so good in Street Fighter 6, 
Now I know you guys are like, well, what about pixels? You know, what about what about the the engine that you know they're using for Guilty Gear and all that? I'm like, yeah, all these things would look amazing, but they're not gonna go back to pixels, man, or not pixels, hand drawn art. It's too expensive, and they can bust out DLC consoles. They're not gonna use the 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 Guilty Gear engine, right? Or won't so because. It's same same thing. They can't bust out DLC costumes because of this still partly hand drawn, right? And Capcom's definitely gonna want that to keep the game alive, right? And keep making money and keep uh, supporting the game for years to come. So I know for sure they'll never use that. It's really gonna come down to Capcom either using the Unreal Engine or they're gonna try something new and use the Ari Engine. And I remember Ono had this huge hard on. For the Decima engine way back, I don't remember the interview, but he was looking at Horizon and he was like, man, this engine would look so beautiful for Street Fighter. And this kind of reminds me, like, now they have an engine to themselves that they don't have to pay anyone for or they don't have to do any type of, you know, like, retroactive thing, right? No type of tax. And they can just do it. They, they test it out with fast moving games like Devil May Cry 5, and I definitely think it would work. Uh, for Street Fighter 6. Now you guys are probably like, oh man, Ken would look so bad, right? If they got like a real person to do the face and all that for the mesh and that. They don't have to do that with the Ari engine. They could if they want to make it look more realistic. But come on guys, let's be real. Ken is ugly in every single Street Fighter since 4. They can't make him look good. Doesn't matter if the Unreal Engine or not. So we might as well just try the Ari engine at this point, seriously. I think there's more to the engine than just looking realistic. The lighting in the engine would look absolutely beautiful in a fine game. And I think this would make Street Fighter VI really, really stand out as a next-gen fighting title. I really do, especially the stages and such. I think it would be a really fresh look and really make Street Fighter VI look distinct uh, than Street Fighter IV and Street Fighter V. I, even though Street Fighter V looks a lot better than Street Fighter IV, I don't feel it's like it's as distinct, right? than because of the Unreal Engine. I think they should really try uh, try this new way of doing it. And hopefully they do because Capcom has already commented that they have multiple R Engine titles, next-gen titles, in the works already at Capcom HQ. So I'm really curious on uh, which ones they are. Um, there's a ton of stuff I want to talk about on Street Fighter 6, but let's just start with this top five for now. Let me know in the comments below what things you guys want. Like if you had to make a top five list or something super important, for Street Fighter 6, especially as something I didn't mention, and we'll get the ball rolling, the conversation going, and I'll be back at you guys with another Street Fighter 6 video on more stuff we can talk about, especially, of course, mechanics. I know you guys want to talk about. So, thanks for uh, chilling with me, guys, and I'll see you guys next time. Take care.